Where are we? YouTube video. I'm serious! I'm serious too. We're in the opening topical skit that most new viewers click out of. Well, how the hell do I get out? Where do the rest of the doors go? The rest are trap doors. They will kill you. Not in a pretty way either. Good to know. You son of a bitch. Thank you to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. My sleep schedule sucks balls. I drink caffeine way too late in the day and expect to fall asleep by like 11. I often have restless legs while trying to sleep, which is um, a fucking torture. The only positive thing regarding my sleep is my Helix Midnight Lux mattress. They sent me that mattress about eight months ago and I already had a mattress that I spent a formidable amount of money on. And I still have slept on my Helix every single night. And you don't know how good your mattress is until you sleep on someone else's. <laughs> Oh, you, you sleep on sheetrock. Is that why you're always such a big- Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding customized to fit your needs and it is conveniently shipped right to your door. You got a 100 night sleep trial, you got a 10 year warranty, there's flexible payment options. And I know it's tough picking a mattress online, but that's why they have the sleep quiz to match the perfect mattress for you. Like I'm a side sleeper, I like medium firm, they found the perfect mattress. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix or click the link below, helixsleep.com slash mrgigi and get 20% off your your Helix mattress plus two free pillows. And thank you, Helix Sleep, for sponsoring this video. Cube, 1997. Yeah, not that one. So I definitely saw this movie at some point when I was younger because I've always known of the concept of Cube. This gargantuan Rubik's Cube of doom where some rooms are safe, some rooms are not. And if you die in one of the trap rooms, it's gonna be gruesome as shit. And I have always loved it without ever re-watching the movie. Realistically, I didn't know if the movie was good. I couldn't name you one character. I couldn't tell you anything that happened in the movie. It's just from the concept I remembered, I adored it. And I can't properly explain it, but this bizarre trap room maze, this glass puzzle house filled with a roster of ghosts, that's my shit. I don't know how to categorize that, it just is. So a handful of people are waking up in a cube-shaped room with no knowledge of where they are, how they got there, or why they're there. They eventually all find each other and slowly decide Discover they each have a set of skills that could aid in their escape from this maze. They were not chosen by accident. So with no food, no water, and no real guidance, they traverse the dangerous structure praying for an exit. Quentin's kind of our main character, he's a cop. Holloway's a doctor. Ren's an escape artist. Levin is phenomenal at math, which plays a huge role in discovering the coordinates of the cubes. Worth actually helped build the outside of the cube, but he holds on to that information for a while. And Kazan is intellectually disabled, but can help the group more than they know. Cube is very very much a science fiction movie. I would never refer to this film as scary. It's honestly just a really fun watch. So let's watch Cube for the first time in I don't know how long. I will also have some more behind the scenes in a bit. Enjoy. We begin our Cube journey with the fella on the cover and he does just about as much as we see here. Oh my God, I got as fresh as Kanye West gear on right now. If only he knew. Ghost ship ain't got shit on this. Oh, I thought that was gonna be a transition to like the title. I thought that was the beginning of a title sequence. That was supposed to be in the universe, got it. So the people who will actually be alive for the foreseeable future start to find each other and you immediately feel everybody's energy. Renz is conniving and won't stand for shit. Also horny. Suck on it. Levin is a panicky dweeb. Worth might as well be asleep. And I've been debating how to describe Holloway. And her best description is just describing her. She's the older white woman of the group. Whatever you just thought, that's her character. You fucking racist. Kazan gets here a little later, but I mean, he's, you know, they already told you. He's quirky. And Quentin is just serious. He is so intense through every line. So much so that he got bullied for it. Like the actual actor, Maurice Dean Wint, was messed with on set. Okay, so the guy who plays Worth and Kazan, along with Vincenzo, are all buddies. And Worth and Kazan hated actors, despite being actors themselves. So when Maurice came along, acting and shit, Worth would legitimately get irritated at every line delivery of his. So he tried to make Maurice's time 
one set a little shittier whenever he could. It's kind of fucked up. He doesn't mention what he did exactly, but he's just like, yeah, Maurice was a nice guy, but I was a young dickhead who hated the fact that he was doing his job. So if any of you ever meet Maurice, give him a compliment on my behalf. Tell him, hey, a little birdie told me that, uh, you could fuck up a harmonica. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> See, the way he was perking up, I thought he was gonna hit him with a stutter. Just right there. That would've been Suplex? sick. RKO, maybe? Stop! Hey, come on, leave her alone. She was just leaving. <laughs> Who says her name? Come on, that's funny, fuck you. <laughs> I know my editors always dog on me whenever I say stupid shit like that. You keep that one in. He's the guy who set it all up. This is just Saw. He's the mastermind behind it. He put himself there. Don't fall for it. And this guy's clearly been here for like 34 years. Does anybody remember how they got here? Pierogies. Pierogies? I was eating pierogies too. Oh, fuck. We wait here? For what? To see if anybody comes? No one's gonna come. <laughs> I wouldn't be so sure, Ward. Levin. Oh, it's Levin. You keep that one in. <laughs> Pierogies. You gotta save yourselves from yourselves. He's gonna die, isn't he? Like, right now? Six seconds later. Ah, oh, fuck. There goes your hairy fucking Houdini. Throw him again! Throw him like you threw that woman! <laughs> that no one questioned earlier. Do something! Pat on his face! Put out the flames! What the fuck is this guy's deal? 1-800 contacts. They can't have my brand. That looks pretty good. <laughs> you just kick him over? I don't want to look at your fucking empty divot of a face anymore. I'm in here, so don't try. Keep your head down. Keep it simple. Just, just look at what's in front of you. That's what he said. I don't even think about nothing that's not right in front of you. We Get fucked. Artist. You just got fucked. You didn't notice it. You didn't acknowledge it. Now you may be starting to wonder, is the whole movie just this? Just different colored box rooms? It absolutely is. And I'm not gonna take that kind of tone from you again. The director, Vincenzo Natali, knew getting this film finance was gonna be a struggle, so he made sure to try and reduce his cost as much as possible. And he also made a short as a proof of concept for people to understand what he was going for. That short was called Elevated. A story about strangers crossing paths in an elevator that is now quickly being identified as a safe haven from a monstrous threat lurking about. Panic and distrust looms through the ride back up, but it's a fun short with that similar claustrophobic feeling and close quarters shooting techniques that are used in Cube. Now, Vincenzo believes that the film turned out better because of its small budget, but this is too good of a thing to not point out. One fun thing he did mention, if he did have a bigger budget, was the casting of the old man Renz. He's the escape artist you saw in the beginning of the movie, and that's why he's so knowledgeable. He's the perfect person you'd want helping you in this situation, but he dies incredibly quick, which is a nice little fuck you to the audience and to the group. So if there was more money on the table, Vincenzo wanted to book a big name actor to play the old man as a bigger fuck you to the audience. Let's flip this movie quick. I love that. Vincenzo saved a lot of money by just making one cube and reusing it. He also made one half a cube, so you can see it when they're opening the door in the back shot. And to show different rooms, he would just put in different colored panels. He was also hiring some of his friends as cast members. The special effects were done for free, which I mean, they look like it, <laughs> but it was still super early for CGI. Even the amazing group of makeup artists they worked with presumably lost money on their end working on this movie. The entire slice and dice scene in the beginning of the movie, all practical. It just all kind of worked out for Vincenzo, even though Cube bombed in theaters, at least in Canada, which isn't something you want for a Canadian film. Canadians just didn't give a shit, but everything works out for Vincenzo. You see, with some investment and marketing money, they brought the movie to France, and it did great in theaters in France. And once it got to the US on video, everybody was rushing to rent the movie. So, why did bomb in Canada? Well, Vincenzo thinks that back then, it was tough for a small indie film to be seen, even if it was local, because the perception was that the public just wanted to see the big, sexy American movies. That is, until a little nugget of a movie came out called The Blair Witch Project, 
which threw that shit out the window, breaking a lot of ground for indie film. So much so that he actually wishes he made Cube after the Blair Witch Project was made. But alas, here we are. Also, small fun fact, in this newspaper clipping from the Times Colonist, Vincenzo discusses a possible Cube sequel that he'll have nothing to do with because he's moving on to his next project, a movie called Splice, which he in fact did direct. This newspaper clipping is from 1999. Splice came out a decade later in 2009. That sucks. Anyways, Let's keep watching Cube. So at this point, Levin has deduced that the safety of a room depends on whether or not the number at the door is a prime number or something. I wasn't listening. Nerd! And that works until it doesn't and almost gets Quentin killed. They find Kazan. Well, they unknowingly drop him into the room. But don't worry, Levin breaks his fall. And ironically enough, Quentin is ready to beat Worf's ass because he can't stay in his aloof demeanor and he also thinks he knows more than he's saying, which he's absolutely right. The jig is up and Worth admits to building the outer shell of the cube. We don't get many answers past that, but this just helps dorky ass, dweeby ass, like most important character, hands down, these people would have been low main hours ago without her. Levin have another epiphany that the cube is using Cartesian coordinates, look it up, dumbass, to tell you where each cube is located. So she thinks she can bring them to an outer shell cube to see what's out there. But first, they have a teeny tiny issue. They have to get through a trap room that is triggered by sound. So as long as they're quiet, they can DK swing through this no problem. But uh, one member of the group is a bit uh, quirky. Don't look prime to me. That your two bits worth? Worth? For what it's worth. Like that bullshit. You knew from square one. Cube one. Look. You're not leaving him behind. He's unpredictable. When we get to the edge, we can come back for him, but he'll get somebody killed here. Yeah, fuck that guy. He'll be quiet. Oh, is he sure? Did he do something? How was Worth sure that he's gonna be quiet? I would not go down while someone else is going down. They are not fucking me over. Hey, don't hey, Brent, don't hit him. Yeah, fuck that guy. Oh no, he's gonna say something. There's no way they both die right now. And this dude, Quentin, sure as hell ain't dying. He's endangering the pack. Let him go, you Nazi! Huh? What did you call me? Hey, in terms of the Edward, she could have threw it. You missed your boat, Holloway. You're all dried up inside there, aren't you? That's mean as hell! Whoa! Whoa! Damn, I was cheering for Quentin, too. I don't know who to side with anymore. He's right, Quentin. You're too heavy. I'm the lightest after 11. Anyways, it's my turn. Damn, those Miss the Boat comments got in her head. Where is she swinging to? All I saw was the outer shell and then just an abyss. What were they trying to get her to swing to? Just another part of the cube? I'll try swinging over there! Swinging over where? Also, you guys can scoot forward like a lot. Oh, there's an- there's a wall? <laughs> Alright, Quentin. You would have slid right out like butter, my guy. There's no way it breaks off at the last second. Oh, okay, I was about to say. No. Quentin. Quentin. Quentin! Bro, she just called you a Nazi. She called you something that you clearly aren't. Alright, so as you can clearly see, Quentin has gone off the deep end. Hey, you know who else went off the deep end? Now, don't get me wrong. Quentin's always been a bit of a wad, but I just didn't think he'd actually murder a woman. Maybe this John Cena FU in the beginning should have been a red flag. So the rest of them don't immediately know he killed her. They just think they couldn't hang on. But regardless, Quentin immediately hounds Levin to start cranking numbers again to get to the bottom of the shell for a better chance at an exit. But she's struggling because, at least in their minds, they all just kind of let Holloway die about 90 seconds ago? Worf suggests some sleep to get their heads right, so they decide to take a long nap. Hey, you know who else took a long? Quentin wakes up and then carries Levin to a neighboring cube where he tries to, for starters, wake her up, but also persuade her to get moving without the rest of the crew. He starts talking nonsense. I mean, he's gone full nuts. Then he starts feeling up on her and she pushes him away. I'm sorry. I just want to know if it's pink. Worth and Kazan swoop in, but then he gets beat by a boot. Hey, this film is Canadian. And then Quentin just throws him down a cube to see if that room's safe. He doesn't die, but he does start to laugh. Are they back in the room they started in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they are. I love this. <laughs> I love it so much. I'm such an 
idiot. How many revelations are you gonna have? I know where the exit is. Is there a spider in her hair? Stay away from me. Back off, Quentin. <laughs> Yeah, why have we forgiven him for being a murderer? Okay. Yes. And five, four, five. Did you get that? <laughs> Yo, Quentin, we might need to beat that ass soon. I don't like your attitude when Levin has done everything. Everything. I can factor that. I can't even start on 567. It's astronomical. <laughs> what did you say? Factors? He's a math whiz! You're telling me Telethon boy is a genius. <laughs> I'm not gonna laugh at that joke, Quentin. You should get your ass beat for that one. Yeah, fuck that guy. Have it open that door. Get Einstein working on the numbers. Uh, oh, let's go. Is he dead? Not quite. Not even close. <laughs> I said, come here right now! Ooh. This dude, Quentin sure as hell ain't dying. So he's dead, right? We ran through that pretty quick. Unless he's not dead. And he tries to take someone here in the end or some shit. Uh-oh. That's right. It goes in the square hole. We hardly, we hardly knew ye. Was his name Kazam? Kazam! Isn't that the Shaq movie, Kazam? So as you just saw, Levin is still the only person that matters here after discovering the cube will have a bridge to the exit for only a specified amount of time in one specific cube. But to get there and identify the trap rooms on the way, Levin is going to need a calculator now to make sure of things because she's working with such large numbers now. But I did tell you Kazan would have something to offer as well. According to Wikipedia, he is an autistic savant and the only one capable of dishing out the numbers she needs in the time they have. On the way there, Worth finally decides to get rid of the dick and send Quentin to the graveyard, so they rush to the exit. They lose Kazan for a little bit, but quickly get him back, and the exit is right where Levin said it would be. I wouldn't take too much time, guys. Just a suggestion. What are you... Guys? Guys. Get out of the cube! <laughs> Motherfucking Quentin Tarantino. Not Levin, bro. Come on, Levin had to make that one. Shaking my head. This is also technically worse fault uh, for throwing the little pity party. Also, there's no way my guy would have snuck up on you guys. The fucking doors are loud as shit. Okay, so this is gonna be the bad ending. Everything is going wrong. Worf decides he's a sad baby at the last moment. The way I feel guilty for building this. Quentin finally gets those back shots he's been fiending for and kills the most important character in the movie. Who didn't like Levin? How dare you? Kazan actually gets out, but not without Quentin right behind. Yeah, baby! Fuck you! Do we see what Kazam went to? Let's go, Big K! I swear, if he just walks off the ledge right now... Don't hit me with credits. Don't, don't you do it. Don't you do it, you cheeky bastard. Touché. Too fucking Shay. Shay Carl, baby. Oh my. Okay. I, okay, so I was not wrong in my assumptions. I do like this movie. I, I miss this movie. I'm glad I watched it again. Cube, baby. Cube. The Godfather to a lot of you pussies on the market right now. That was fun. I had a good time. I just don't know how to explain it. I love it. Even the ending, as cheeky as it is, I like that we don't get an answer as to what is actually out there. I love that practically nothing gets answered. The why, what, how, we got crumbs at the end of the day. And whether those questions are answered in the sequel or the prequel, who gives a shit? It's not Vincenzo's answer, but I definitely am open to watching those as well as a 2021 Japanese remake of the movie, just so I could see how much they probably suck in comparison to this one, but then I can compare them all. Lionsgate is also apparently trying to hear out some pitches for a remake, but I mean, we'll see where that goes. I'll be here watching Vincenzo's Cube in the meantime. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, subscribe, try to hit a milli in 2023. Beautiful patrons, here they are. I release exclusive videos on Patreon 
monthly. New barware and clothes at uh, invis.tv slash Mr. Gigi. And as always, I am Mr. Gigi, and I am out. <laughs>